Yes, oh. <laughs> You guys totally match our colors. We're going to be invisible. <laughs> <laughs> it's green <laughs> screen style. We're pale. It tends to happen. Where we blend in with the wall. <laughs> The thing that I hate is that Tasha can like walk into the sun for a second and, and come out tan, tan yeah. and I just get like a mole <laughs> with the, the difference that we are. Let's jump right into okay. it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to The Sap. It's uh, Tasha Courtney, hello. Dave Neal, and we're with Jocelyn and Aaron Freeman. How hello, are you? Hello, hello, hey the Freemans. Everyone. Thank you guys welcome. so much for coming. Uh, y- uh, the founders of, let me get this right, Freeman. The, wait, wait, no. Oh, Meet the Freeman? No, founders of Empowered Couples University. Yes, but Freeman, you know, freedom, free, the same thing. I yeah. like Empowered it. Meet the Freemans. Yes. Thank you guys now so much for coming. Now you've met the Freemans. I know, met the Freemans. <laughs> you need a past tense. And I want to get like a university hoodie now, just like, uh, you know, just a fr- how about Freeman University? F you. We'll just go with Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. You guys drove all the way in. For, you're in Los Angeles from uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Yes, yeah. Just a six hour hop, skip and a jump over here. And I like that drive. It's really not that bad. No. Like six hours sound sounds crazy but like it's it not it's fun we were listening to an audio book a good audio book was starting to fall asleep a little bit but we talk it's Esther a great Perel, actually yeah uh, what is it called mating in, in captivity. captivity yes oh i've heard about this one and and uh is it just it's just like how we act is it is it, is it like just relating us to animals and all that no i she hasn't gotten to that yet i mean she's more so talking about similar to things that we talk about just how just modern day construct can sometimes remove like the romance and the mystery. So just kind of talking about basically how society is now and is that impacting marriage and satisfaction and can love and lust lust coexist. Now, do you guys feel the need to be perfect because mm. you're marriage experts? This is such oh, a great question. What do you say, Aaron? No. <laughs> and we, actually, we, we actually found that the more authentic you are about where you're at, the more people are like, oh my gosh, you understand where I'm coming from. Mm-hmm. It and resonates. they like want to talk to you. Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. it resonates. You feel like, oh my gosh, someone's actually talking about what I've been feeling so you can get into a better conversation, right? And I don't know, for us, it's not about feeling like the experts per se, but the more you share authentically, the more we see our own relationship as the practice field for our own principles, the better we get, right? So... And in um, fact, we actually almost have more challenges come up in our relationship because we're a yes to this work. And so sometimes we're like, why? Why, why is this happening to us? And then the next day it serves us a couple. I, well, do have, I have to say this one quick thing. It seems like there is a stretch of road in Phoenix on the highway from like 20th Street to 3rd Street. Every time we're in between there, it's like we have an upset come up. There's negative it's like that energy. Of road. <laughs> <laughs> but the car is such a safe space. Mm-hmm. We, I've, you know, the podcast is a very safe space too, but I find, and actually there's scientific evidence to support this. Like if you're a mom trying to talk to your kid who's kind of closed off to you because they're a teenager or whatever, the car is mm-hmm. a place where people tend to open up a little more because it's enclosed. Yes. It's a nice little See, safe we've bubble. Bu- our fights early on were in the car. Uh-huh. And then that was because one of Tasha's triggers. Don't don't let me speak out of at a, at a voice here, whatever. But uh, was traffic. You just get it. You get all stressed out in traffic, and then I'll be like, "Babe, calm down." And you're like, Brah! "And I'm like, okay, let's not." But but we haven't fought in a car in in years, probably like a real fight. So like we like solved that level That's of our good. relationship. But like, are you? Do you guys have places aside from between Thirtieth and Third mm. Street? Do you have places where you know, like, all right, we're about to go on vacation. Uh, Three hours before we have to leave for the airport, we're going to get in a fight. Like, do you have those things? Are you know stress levels are high? Totally. I would say a couple things. It's actually more about time. So for us, the morning, I'm sensitive to how I start my day. So I have to kind of set my mindset, set my intentions. And if we start to talk about any kind of to-do list or... So we know we're in business together. So any kind of business items, I start to get a little bit anxious and riled up and then I'll kind of get short with him and sensitive. So now we actually have an agreement. We've had this for a while and sometimes we forget the agreement and then remind each other of the agreement. But the agreement is no, you know, to do list or business conversations. till after we've had our like meditation time. And so that's normally like nine or 10 a.m. So in the mornings for sure. I like that. I, you know, a lot of, you know, I spent the majority of my twenties in the, in the, in the single life and as a single person, you think it's crazy the sort of rules and things you need to know about other people because with your buddies if it's like if your buddy's getting annoying it's like i'll just see you sunday or like yes. you just can like ditch it but with the relationships you're really forced to look at your own flaws mm-hmm. or you just say fuck it and you just go on to the next person and then they bring up your dirty laundry and then yes. you just go on to the next one so it's like if you, when you are really committed to someone i think you work more on like figuring out how to find that peace versus just um assuming it's the other person's problem 100 you know? and that's sort of like the fun part 
part of challenges. It's almost like what you were saying. It's like as we level up, other problems keep presenting themselves yes. because you're holding yourself to a higher standard. So it's like until you reach like nirvana level mm-hmm. or whatever, it does that. Can you even get there? Like you're yeah. always you're holding yourself to a higher standard. You're leveling up, you're leveling up and you're going to face the next level's problems together. Well, I'd even say that you're asleep if you're having no problems. And actually, I think people would be like, oh, we're fine. That's the worst thing I think people can say is, truthfully, like when people go, we're good. You know, we're fine. I'm like, ooh, you're in trouble. Yeah, because you know, you're, you're sweeping partners. stuff under the rug. Yes. Yeah, and you're just calcifying that sort of like, I, I always think of it as like an exoskeleton of just bitterness. And you're just, and then you become so rigid, you can't even adjust when things should be better. It's just that, I mean, we, you know, and then we'll see it like on the micro level once in a while where it's like, I'll just know I'm just annoyed about shit. And I, and it's because I want, like, my codependency wants to just keep Tasha happy. So I'm not bringing up all the things or even the little things that annoy mm. me. And it's always like, banana it's always the dumbest thing it's never some like core moral issue it's always just like i'll light the candles before the guests arrive you know what i mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? so it's always like this if, if you put it on paper it sounds so stupid but it's the, the but that's the thing that like i'll just be like the nicest guy and then all of a sudden i'm just an asshole mm. and i'm quick and as like a comic i'm just quick to respond and then she says something i'm like i'm right back at you and then it's gone and then it's like cats out of the do bag do you notice any kind of trend or theme of is it a time when you're like out of balance you haven't filled your own cup do you see anything I, I hate being criticized okay and tasha's a perfectionist he taking direction he's a, like he, you sort of you kind of take things personally like yeah. if i give you if i tell you what to do you take it as like an insult you're very sensitive in that way like uh, you you perceive it as one of your own shortcomings when it's like no i'm not <laughs> saying you're a bad person just mm-hmm. can you like be a little more detail oriented like when they you're say, picking up your stuff the yeah. male ego is <laughs> fragile but it's like all we have right it's like all we have is like if i like uh like this morning yeah i um you touch we like woke up super late and she's like babe I, I i'm so late i need your help I, can you make me a sandwich yeah sure whatever i made you a sandwich i tucked it away i'm doing well, I dishes. Said, can you make me lunch yeah but it, that's but, but this then, is a key part of what you're about to say <laughs> yeah. said, babe, can you make me lunch and then i'm like like ready to run out the door i come in here to grab my lunch and my lunch bag isn't out and he's done all the dishes and i was like oh my god he came in here saw the dishes did all the dishes which is great thank you honey but he forgot about the lunch mm-hmm. and i was like babe you didn't make me lunch and he's like i made you a sandwich no i didn't say <laughs> but this was a good example where like in the past would have been like i did the fucking dishes okay i did i scrub you know what i mean i would have just like been ready to go but in this case i was like no 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 like i made your sandwich it's just i didn't put it all together because here's what I, I put it all together and then she takes it all apart and reorganizes it so i don't even put it in the bag anymore <laughs> but like yeah i made your sandwich i had the lettuce i the, it was a good Thank little it was very a thinly sliced sandwich. onions it was a good sandwich it was a great <laughs> sandwich it was the best sandwich um but yeah, so like we're not, we're getting a handle on, it's like, you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. So like we, we know where sur- some of the triggers are, but now it's like, all right, let's get to that next level mm-hmm. and expose sort of like the things that are holding us back. And I wanted to ask you guys about mm-hmm. this because on your Instagram, which is meet underscore the Freemans, am I right? Meet Correct, underscore yeah. the Freemans. Mm-hmm. No, no D on free, not free man, Freeman, mm-hmm. Freeman, yeah, Freeman, Freeman, uh, meet the Freeman, meet underscore the Freemans. And then you talk about be, uh, coaching couples to become power couples, hashtag power mm-hmm. couples. Yes. Yeah, so well, it's to learn the relationship skills to be a true power couple. So what we think is actually one of the biggest jokes about school is that we have math, science, arts, PE, but no relationship class. And yet one of the biggest aspirations every single person has is to find a partner, right? At some point, whether they're 20 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old, we want to be with someone, but there's no training for it. And we think that that is pretty laughable because it's so significant. And in fact, people will really quickly sign their signature on a really important contract, right? Your marriage license. And I don't think people pause and go like, that's a really serious decision. You're merging money. It's almost like people would be more cautious about which um, bank account you open or or phone, you know, (laughs) do I do Verizon? Do I do AT&T? Let me really think about this. But yeah, let me sign the, you know, marriage license here. So we talk about learning the relationship skills just as much as you would learn about your profession or something that you're passionate about, putting that same intention into your relationship. So that's what we teach, are all those relationship skills that no one taught you, so that you're not repeating what your parents did, which I didn't necessarily want to repeat what my parents did, right, or what I saw in movies. They're the worst. Yeah, exactly. And it is, like, our system now is totally just self-discovery. Like, they throw you in preschool yes. or kindergarten, and that's, like, where you learn socialization. But, like, some people, it doesn't come easy. Mm-hmm. Like, for some people, it could require, like, 
a little bit of guidance or a little bit of introspection, like a deeper look. Oh yeah. You know, and I thought I was thinking a, a lot about this, about, about that same idea of how we aren't coached in sort of higher enlightenment, spirituality, mm-hmm. communicating with others. And then I was thinking, I don't know, I don't know if it's the type, I mean, there should definitely be like, uh, like a, uh, uh, so sort of like a game plan on how to learn if you're willing, but there is something about finding out that you want to know more Mm -hmm. there is something about you know being in a relationship where you want it to succeed so much you start looking outwards and like googling things and because it it would be i mean i'm I'm still guilty of this in relationships where i'll just google i will be in a fight and i'll just google my version of how to fix it why does my girlfriend why is she so annoying when you know not don't look okay i've lost you i'm just trying for you to i'm trying to figure out what you're saying i'm always guilty of initially figuring out what she did wrong Mm -hmm. You know, that's like the easy thing to do. But I think when it comes to like enlightenment, whether it is within the relationship or yourself and and just becoming like a better version of yourself, Mm -hmm. it really involves just like searching. That info can't just come to you. Like you can't just be a spiritual person and be like, hey, this is, you know, you know, leap in the net will appear. And the person can be like, well, fuck you. You know, you have to like really believe. It's a journey of self-discovery. And that's the important part is that it's self-guided. That's how you know it's really, you're really motivated. Nobody, you can't make somebody change, right? If you're in a relationship that's not, that's just not working, you're not on the same level. You can't tell somebody, hey, I need this from you and expect them to do it. They have to decide on their own that Mm -hmm. I want to meet this person there. Well, it's actually a great point you bring up because a lot of people are searching to fill something in themselves, to feel valuable, to feel love out in the world, to not feel isolated, to feel connected, but they search outside themselves. And that's kind of a recipe for disaster that if you're relying on the partner, searching this life for a partner that has you feel something that you feel is missing, they're not ever going to be able to really fulfill that in you so you're setting them up for an expectation that is impossible for them to fulfill right so perfectly said this journey of relationship is really about your own passion to discover who you are as an individual and go through that aspiration to grow and better yourself and then it's like you get to hold hands or link arms or pat the butt of a person next to you that's also into that type of discovery for themselves and then doing it together is, is a powerful place to be. And to us, that's yeah. being a, a true couple. power couple is becoming your best version of yourself and discovering what does a power couple yeah. mean to us as we go on this journey of yeah. co-creation. That's a, that's a word we like. Yes, I have, I have some honest truth for people. Oh Are you all ready for that? Yeah. Ha- hashtag, hashtag. Okay. <laughs> it's really that love isn't enough. And that's tough to hear sometimes because I think everyone seeks for that love and that romance. Yeah, it's a romanticized sort of version of what we expect. Right, but we know, we sit down with couples all the time that love each other so much and they can't communicate for anything. And they're frustrated in the morning and the night. So we say you can love each other, but if you don't have the skills to communicate or resolve conflict or understand each other's emotions or be able to make plans together, set goals, prioritize that love can start to disintegrate, right? Like love, they say like love is, you know, can bear all. I don't know. Can you be happy though, right? So that's something that we really try to teach people is like love is one ingredient, but then having those skills. What do you think is the next most important? Is it communication? Communication for sure, because that's the way that you're exchanging information with people, right? Like communication is the foundation. So even if couples struggle with money, it's communication challenge, right? Or mm-hmm. some sort of structure that they can implement. But again, communication. So would you say I will go one deeper. And inside of a communication, because it's a broad category, is listening. Mm-hmm. If you can actually develop your skills of listening, if you could first seek to understand the other's point of view before trying to force your opinion, have them understand you, that's really the foundation of communication is actually your listening. That's what's the beauty of the podcast is that we are forced to listen I don't know people that are listening now go, Dave, you're the worst at listening. But we're forced to listen because if, if, if one of us is just railroading the other on the podcast, our listeners are the jury. They were like, oh, yeah, you really took over that one. You know? And they're like, sorry, I had too much to drink, too many coffees. But like, yeah, we, 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 we put ourselves in the spotlight here to like force ourselves to kind of just like air it all out and not being in a rush. Sometimes one of the issues we've had early on, and it still comes across, is if we are going to work at different times or we're not on, we can't be like, eye to eye in the same room and the issues aren't always solved right away yeah and that's something where it's kind of like i guess what i've had to learn is just to have faith that we'll both we're both coming back to the apartment like it you know we can't always solve everything right away but like 
in the end, we kind of know that we're sort of trying to get to the same place. Yeah. Drink. Well, that's like modern life. We talk about modern challenges today, right? It's like, it's so fast paced. You know, people usually in most partnerships, both are working or one is really taking care of the family. So this busyness. And so couples are like, just, all right, I'll text you. You know, I, I got to go to work and you haven't really had quality time. They come home, maybe they watch TV or they do play a game or something like that. And then they go to bed and then they wake up and the next day and then it's Friday. Let's go to a movie. Let's go to dinner. Okay. Let's go to target. Let's go to bed, bath and beyond. We got the errands to run. And then when was quality time? When was sitting down and not just talking about how was your day? You know, all of those checklist things that you talk about, but Hey, how are you really bigger how picture we, stuff? Right. Yeah. And that's like where we say actually set up a weekly family meeting as a couple to have the eye to eye time, like you're talking about and be able to go deeper instead of those quick what do we call them drive-by conversations right yeah. like just a drive-by <laughs> and you're supposed to be connected with that but well we uh, just got a dry erase board right there so we're really starting to kill it nice. with the communicating yeah we're <laughs> really uh, bringing it bring it to the next level we don't have a shared google calendar yet tasha is old school i refuse i have too many other calendars they're gonna, for they're, work they're gonna tell you you it. need a shared google calendar it does save so much <laughs> <laughs> you know, we love it to I'll be honest <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but we actually do have one. We just don't really use it. Well, like you I don't mean, put your work schedule in there. No, but, but we, I need to because the, my, the thing. Okay. So one of the things that builds resentment in myself is there's this like hustle for stand up comedy. That's always like, I'm never doing enough. And it's a nighttime art right now. They've got a few mics that are at 2 PM, which is nice. So like I can have some nights off, but like if I'm, I mean like you don't take three days off in a row. That's just against the rules. Right. Except I've probably done that three out of four weeks for the last six months like it's been tough for me and like on the inside i'm like i'm not pursuing my dreams i'm not getting where i need to go fast enough and there's other people that are just passing me but then i also want to show up and be the boyfriend who does quality time so like our our need to to sort of communicate is that like is like so heightened because i'm putting my career on the back burner right now even though it might not seem that way it, with with the time it takes to be sitting alone writing and all those different little things and i'm not blaming you tasha but it is it's hard in this day and age to uh, with things as hectic mm -hmm. as they are to prioritize that like bigger picture eye to eye serious conversation to check in with each other and mm -hmm. make sure are our goals still aligned are mm -hmm. we doing the things that we need to do for retirement down the road like all of this b sort of big picture stuff when you're just like trying to get through mm -hmm. your long work day and overtime and stage time and do the dishes and run the vacuum like if you can just sit down for 30 minutes of TV at the end of the night that feels like a victory yes. you know you're stretched so thin mm -hmm. but we marathon TV though like we took if we literally took the tv out of the out of the house we would probably be like moving mountains together <laughs> it's just like it, it it does there's so much good yeah. shit out there i don't think we really go crazy with the tv but yeah i mean we could afford for it to do something else with find that hour, an hour a night yeah. to like it's been really good if we'll have seasons of being like let's not watch any tv at all till like saturday night right mm -hmm. and so have it's really nice to kind of go on a detox like and set just a little date for it you know yes. like monday night check in night tuesday totally. night that's TV what we night. say and make it a date even like go out for coffee coffee go to dinner like actually we're good with dinner dates we like food <laughs> but not even but so it's an intentional conversation though so it's not just like hey let's talk about random things we actually have actually a, a weekly an agenda in, in a oh, way nice. right? yeah the, it, couples can download it actually and it goes over like even how's our intimacy really asking because when was the last time you asked each other like how satisfied are you with our intimacy and you got to be courageous to ask that mm -hmm. question yeah first of all yeah. like so are you ready for the answer you right? got to be ready that the, the conversation you're going to have is one that's meant to have you really know where you're at because how many times in different parts of life can you say you can't get where you want to go unless you first know where you're at and in a relationship we make so many assumptions primarily that our own needs are being met and we think oh yeah intimacy that's probably going great you know man <laughs> we just had sex like yesterday and then this morning but when you check in with your partner the intimacy might be meaning something different like they want to connect more they want to have more of an emotional conversation and or i might score on the sheet that intimacy is like a nine for me and jocelyn is really like a six it's not a bad thing to know that you need to start somewhere you need to bring awareness but you of need to where be you're able both to detach at from the result and know that it's not like a personal flaw yeah but that right. it's just a conversation i don't want to oh, make that's interesting i don't yeah mm -hmm. i don't want to make this uh 
a very binary like men are this way women are that mm-hmm. way because i know my, the thing i like to say is that all women hate being generalized i like that term because it's you know but all women uh, are this way uh, men i think are better at being very binary with like all right we had sex intimacy done Check. i think men pull the trigger i could be wrong maybe, maybe, maybe there's a spectrum to everything obviously but i think that's like kind of where that's like where i'm at and i don't know tasha if you're the same way with intimacy i think that's probably the even though we talk about sex and dating and all this i think like the actual nitty-gritty of intimacy is probably our weakest point or one of them would you agree yeah i mean we definitely we went through a period where we were like okay we have to start scheduling sex Mm -hmm. and like it it feels so sterile and weird to do but like i was just saying our lives are like runaway trains and sometimes it's just hard to find a few hours to be together you know where we're in tune where we're in sync but we realize we're not scheduling it like you know, like, all right, next Tuesday. We're, no, I mean, it's but like we later. had to make a point yeah. to be like, okay. And not I, just wait until you're in the mood. Right. right? Exactly. Like intentionally. Right. Because who yes. knows when you're both going to be in the mood at right. the same time. Well, that's when, actually like, one of the so errors. Much going on. That's an error people make is waiting till they're in the mood. Yeah. Right? And that's the same thing. Waiting until you're in the mood Create to have a the conversation. Mood. Waiting until you're in the mood to share your emotions. No, you set the intention, you sit down, you know, mm-hmm. and you And if you know that Tuesday night at seven we have a date scheduled, then you're looking forward to exactly. it a couple of days in advance, you're getting excited, you're texting yeah, each Tasha other little fun eats pictures. Too much the and day. She's bloated. Yeah, you, you know. gotta be careful not to eat too much. Our, <laughs> I was a nighttime sex guy and Tasha was a morning sex because for me it was like being single. You'd either meet someone out of the bars. The only morning sex is the morning after sex. That's the only that was yeah, cause there were, but then relationships I think are more like I mean, I don't know, it can be it can be whatever but we were just on complete opposite ends of the spectrum i think initially like once the once that first honeymoon kind of passion wore off it was kind of like i gotta work i got what are you doing and she's like i'm not gonna you know yeah we were we were not on the same page but i think we naturally got over that hump uh, hmm, hump. uh-huh no but, <laughs> uh, but you know but still like yeah if a week or two goes by i mean you hear about these we have a couple of friends that it's like jesus christ they're like seem like rabbits five years into their relationship we're like what are you doing over there we're, we're kind of just like no we're just gonna hang out and watch a movie but but i guess it's just like getting on the same page with with, with intimacy is like anything else it's just mm-hmm. you know we we it but but it's taboo. it just requires being cognizant it's ta- it's just taboo to like like your your family my, my family catholic upbringing doesn't talk about obviously sex or anything like that and then and then i would say same with yours so it's like both of our weaknesses put together like not that we would avoid it all together but i would get get ready and frisky like you know to turn you know light switch ready to go and then t- you know for her there's neat more emotional foreplay and more you know just like you know yeah. you, 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 what the zone you need to be in is different than mine yeah. and that makes sense on like almost like a genetic level where like you watch the nature videos the horse just fucking thrusts and falls over like the guys are just meant to just pull the trigger well, I'm not sure about that one, but what I, what I will share... I stand by that. <laughs> I'd have to get more into what you're saying. But I think for what I hear from women is that a, a lot of times they're not feeling the sexual desire because they're actually missing intimacy, which intimacy is m- deeper than just physical motion and movement. It's into me you see. It's being actually connected to each other. And that is where women will just be like, well, I don't feel the desire because their cup isn't full, right? Their emotional cup isn't full. They don't actually feel connected. What, do you, what would you say about the male thing? Because I know that's something you talk to men about as well. I'm not the one that fits into the general category because my upbringing was much like yours, a very Christian background. And as I grew up, the way I heard it, someone standing at the front at the altar, I went to a Christian school and yet I was the only one that heard it this way. Like, don't have sex before you get married. That's a sin. You're going to be sleeping in hell. And for some reason, I took that on like so seriously. Like, wow, oh, this is like, I feel ashamed. So as I got older, now I'm like literally the only one that I know that hasn't had sex. I mean, even in my Christian school, right? So it's like, now I'm like this outcast and I feel a lot of shame around it. Get to college. It's like, I don't want to tell anybody this. I don't even think I told my best friends. And I just kind of avoided the topic. And it's so it became a thing for me that was first like something's going to happen to my spirit if I, yeah, if some I have fear, sex. like a fear motivation. And now it's like, I'm just like this weird person if I tell anybody this because everyone else in society is. And then the funny so you thing start is, to associate shame. Absolute shame. And then it's like, 
now I get to the place where I'm with Jocelyn and we created the agreement that I was going to hold to that until we got married. So it's like on the wedding day, like, yeah, boy, you can have sex. <laughs> but what really changed from my mindset? What really changed from like my emotional intelligence around it? Like I didn't, didn't do anything about that yet. So that was something I had to really dive into and be honest with myself about that just because I'm able to have sex physically now, what have I done to the 27 years of feeling the shame and the embarrassment? Mm -hmm. So I just kind of yeah. had to own that for myself. Was yeah. there a moment where you were able to release that or is it just a work in progress? Because I, I mean, I know it, I know shame. You know, I understand that. And it's not something that you can just easily identify. It just lives in different dark areas. Hmm. I can't say I probably have. Sh I didn't share it very quickly. Right. But I, I, us being into that we're going to help relationships, it's like that comes up for us. So I would say the more that I verbalized it and vocalized it, started to have the conversations. Shine some light exactly, into those corners. Shine, when I just said it out loud, you start to release some of the hold that it feels like it has on you. And then I had a partner that was great at listening. And, you know, the conversation I was going to bring up is like about initiating. So in the beginning... I didn't even have sex before, let alone be the one that initiated it. So, Which like, I our deserve, first six I years. I deserve a gold star. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, let me tell you. The, yeah, you do. The first six months was like her totally initiating. Like, I had to trust her and I had to have the conversation of, like, will you lead us in our intimacy, in our, in our sex life? Because, to be honest, I have no idea. And yeah, like you there have was, to learn how to do that. It's not a skill that you just naturally know. Like yeah. that's, it requires some finesse. But also, very <laughs> honestly, though, very brave of you to not just like fake it, like yeah. fake, like fake, like you know what you're doing, and just be, you know what I mean. Oh, to I just, remember like, the date he told me. I'll never forget. I know like, where you were I at too. Yeah, I remember sitting. We're outside. We're at dinner. What? How many months in were we? Maybe that, six remember, like weeks. Six. six weeks, two months. We were talking. Just I said, "Well, so have you ever had?" We were just, you know, random conversations. I was like, "Have you ever had one night stands and things like that?" And he goes, "No, because you know I've never had sex." And I was like, "Hold on, can, we, can, can you go back one second? <laughs> Repeat, on that thing? please. Yeah, what? Back. I think I misheard. In a way, I thought it was like a joke for a second. And you're then, thinking like, you mean this week? <laughs> <laughs> and so he goes, "Well, yeah, I've never had sex before." And I was like. Oh, really? I didn't want to have this dramatic reaction like, what? And, right? I wanted to be, I didn't want to make him feel But that's like yeah, balls you in your court. <laughs> that's like, all right, yes. that's a lot to. Yeah. So it was actually really inspiring to hear his story about why. And I just had to trust that. And for me, I was more committed to just us and our bond. And I felt something really special with him. And so I was like, okay, I'm on board for that. Can yeah. I ask you a question? Yeah. Okay. I don't think, because I never asked, what, what was like your initial visceral reaction Gosh, to me saying that i would have to go like i'm i'm not recalling but more so just like maybe kind of butterflies like almost like nervous mm. to like really dive into it and hear more about it yeah i mean it's 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 wild i didn't i didn't tell the girl i lost my virginity to that i was a virgin it was in college and i was I, in high school like i i was kind of instilled with this catholic like save it for marriage thing but but also like i don't i feel like Catholic, at least in Rhode Island, it was kind of like a, kind of a, like a not not, not super that serious. Yeah, it was, so like the shame, it wasn't too much shame there. So like as soon as I got to college, I you know by the time I was ready for sex, I was years behind the emotional things I needed to do to even get laid. You know what I mean? Like I just wasn't so like I was just so I was ready for sex for a couple of years and just failing at even trying to get a girl to like convince her that she wanted to have sex with me back. You know what I mean? <laughs> Tasha's looking at me like you're still that way, Dave. But but. uh yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to let her know because I was like, I'm not. Uh, that was so much pressure. It feels like there's so much pressure on the on a guy to have this like masculine like mm -hmm. slay in it sort of vibe yeah. that like you don't even. I didn't. My buddies didn't know. No one knew. Everyone made fun of our buddy Miko. You know Miko. Mm -hmm. Everyone made fun of Miko in our fraternity because he was the guy who hadn't gotten laid yet. And I was. I didn't make fun of him, but I was the quiet one who was like, Oh, me neither, <laughs> because I knew everyone was going to be like, Ah, oh, Dave's a virgin. And then they would tell the little girl. And then the the the. The, the ladies would probably if they didn't like like me to that level wouldn't want to be the one and this and that so it was a whole thing yeah. around it well there's so many well, expectations on men too and kind of even connecting this back to emotional and intimacy men do have feelings and in fact as they go deeper into this work they're revealing things that they never gave themselves permission to their parents didn't give them permission to no other society doesn't right. give them permission yeah so men do definitely not the same and i think one mistake women can make is 
want their male partner to be like them. Why don't, why aren't you as sad as I am? Why aren't you? Yeah. Kind of projecting their own emotional experience. And there there are masculine energy and feminine energy differences and not male, female, masculine and feminine, which, you know, there can be opposites that are, you know, there can be women that are more masculine dominated and vice versa. And so women can be like, well, you aren't feeling as emotional as me. And so it's not that, right? It's not projecting that the men should be as maybe emotional as sometimes the female is, but there are emotions in there. And a lot of men are learning to tap (laughs) into that. Yeah, because they're uncomfortable with it Mm -hmm. because society really does, you know, we talk about toxic masculinity sometimes, put these expectations on men that they should be stoic, they should be brave, they should hold in their fears, you know. And so there's all of this pressure to like, push your emotions deep way down yeah. and and not experience them but so we, i think when guys start to discover that like oh no it's cool it's okay mm-hmm. i i'm allowed to experience this i'm allowed to open up this box and see what's inside i think we flipped it early on we read the superior man you yes. know they, so they're, they're yeah. he's really big on the masculine and feminine energies and i i was raised by my my mom and my sister so like i was always told let it out let it out so i was like i'm not I wasn't a huge crier but i wasn't like I won't do it. like if i needed to cry i needed to cry if i'm watching you know uh with some you know whatever show or you know the, i'll cry i'm just gonna at the end of the movie whatever i'm at and but then tasha you had like a oldest sibling don't show your emotions mm-hmm. kind of masculine energy to you yeah i my family um was never very communicative never very like into we didn't talk about our feelings like we weren't hugger you know it was just like it was one of those things that like i i didn't know how to do that i had very low like emotional intelligence for it, it sharing my emotions and i think and then i was just out on my own too i was like making it on my own in New York and just like always having to be the strong person. I think the first time he saw me cry, he was like in shock and I was in shock too because it was like, you know, a a big uh, moment. This wasn't in the manual. (laughs) I I love that you're saying that too, because that's a powerful conversation as a couple to talk about was like, you know, when you were brought up, how, what was it like? And how's that impact your emotional awareness now? I think people, couples need to learn more about each other's upbringing and how that's influencing them. And we were even talking to a couple, a couple days ago, couple, couple, days ago how many times in a row can I say that and they were really realizing that he had one idea of what marriage was going to look like and it was very different and they were like four years into marriage and she had a vision of what it was going to look like and they were way different and they never talked about it she looked over at him and she was like shocked she said I didn't know that that's what you were expecting of me right Exactly. And so couples need to talk about their upbringing, what kind of a vision is that giving them for their marriage, what they think that's going to be, and make sure that they're actually aligned. Because definitely would not work if you had one vision. If you wanted me to cook, it would not go well. Right? I'm not... <laughs> That, and that's just a small example. You and Tasha it, <laughs> can agree on that. Yeah. Dave's maybe the better cat. I came home the other night and I go, "What'd you burn?" <laughs> All the windows were open. I, it just smelled like something was burnt. She burnt a cor- grilled cheese. You, you burnt corn <laughs> once or broccoli. I was like, "Why do you even burn that?" <laughs> I, I would get. I just I get, put it on full blast and go. <laughs> and sometimes I get a little distracted. And then once a week, I'm like, "There's a cold." mug of water in the microwave <laughs> like what was that from <laughs> oh yeah it's <laughs> gonna make tea <laughs> but uh you know it's uh, do you guys ever you know you coach couples or whatever and then days over you're driving home do you ever just look at each other and go eh, that's not gonna last <laughs> like, do you- well we wouldn't say it that way what, what do you think well we're honest with people you know mm-hmm. so we say we're out to lower the divorce rate we also get that some people got into a relationship that's what we would say out of alignment and so some people might need to complete their relationship. But our goal is that the conversation for relationship skills becomes, you know, so like common and understood that you're having that before you get into the marriage. Like while you're dating, you're having conversations like, what do you experience? Like, what do you want your life to look like? What's your vision? You know, maybe have a conversation about what your skills and talents are. Like, what, what can we create together? And start to have those so that when you do get married, you're already aligned rather than getting into a place where, you know, you made the decisions from all the places that we've been talking about, trying to fill a gap in yourself. Here you're married three years later, and it's like, Mm -hmm. damn. And you're right. You really hit the nail on the head when you say, like, you want to paint a clear picture of what your future looks like and make sure that you're looking at a picture that's the same or similar. Oh, it must be the same for them, too, right? Everyone must think this. And actually, quick story, when we first started this work years ago, one of our first 
two couples, we actually had to sit down and tell them that we recommended they pause on getting married. Wow. It was like one of the first couples because we worked with them. We did their preparing for marriage work and there was just so much that they were projecting onto each other. So many expectations and they weren't willing to take responsibility for a lot of them. So we said, you know, hey, we just want to be honest with you that until you have more uh, time working through things and talking through things, we'd recommend just maybe pausing on the wedding a little bit or because I don't think they had set a date. So we weren't saying like cancel all the reservations and everything and it was tough but actually it was so powerful that it was one of our first few couples because we've had to do it several times now and some listen some still go through with it and then call us you know two months into marriage going oh my gosh uh but I think that's, again, you wouldn't show, okay, if you wanted to be a doctor, would you show up to the hospital and be like, I'd really like to be a doctor, but I didn't go to school. I didn't get any kind of training, but would you just trust me? Would you just give me a chance? No, <laughs> right? Everyone would think you're crazy, but yet people, again, get into these marriages not having gone through any prior training, and then they think they're qualified for marriage. And we just, again, think that's like a backwards mindset, and we understand why, and that's that's just what we're at ambassadors for we actually say we're campaigning you know just like all the politics right now we're campaigning for marriage <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like it i think i think the one of the bigger issues with with marriage it, it seems to be people just they're jumping into it early and they're not they don't know who they are and yeah the same thing they're just like kind of getting to the finish line without running the race and it's like in a, it with, with social i think with social media you see well that person's married and happy well what about us and like we've been together for six years now and we're like in our 30s and we're like not, you know, young and don't know who we are. Like, I mean, we're still, we don't, we haven't figured it all out, but like, there's a lot to be said with like the rates of like the longer you can sort of like take time to figure yourself out, the the probably higher success rate you might have just because you're not just like running into the wrong thing, painting all the red flags, you know, other colors. I'm curious to know what are like the number, you know, like the top five or whatever red flags that stand out mm -hmm. to you guys when you are like, uh oh, yeah. I don't advise. Yeah, absolutely. Any, I'll share one. You want to share one? Go ahead. We'll yeah. take turns. Okay. So I'd say one that definitely stands out is when people constantly point the finger. So if they're both going like this and pointing fingers and they can't ever get to a point of going, where am I responsible for this? So we'll watch a couple, we'll observe them. And if it keeps going that way and we give them the homework to practice pointing the finger at themselves and where they're responsible, if they can't do that, that's a big red flag. Tasha, that one's you. That's not That's true. That's point the finger at Tasha <laughs> for the audio listeners. Yes, you failed. <laughs> no, but I know, but you're right. It's so it's so like a mind. It's so like a sort of a, like well, it, uh, we need to do this. It's it, it makes a difference because when totally. you're pointing, you're you're just you you know you're your language you're makes a difference, and language is a first step to action too. Mm -hmm. So even if it's just part of your uh, your exercise, your homework to start using the we words yes. or start using the I words, like you know, being a little more reflective, then you put that into practice it becomes easier to actually do definitely see the bigger picture and sometimes it just requires you or it'll require me an extra breath to be like hmm how do i phrase this because i know what i want to say on my yeah. inside so i'm letting myself say it on my inside you're being a fucking you know whatever it is but then I, but then i'm like when we you know mm -hmm. when we aren't on the same page i get frustrated because yeah. i want us to have a good sunday yeah well i want to say something <laughs> so interesting about that because we've been having this conversation and it's my experience as well when you pause when you feel like triggered and upset and you take a moment in your mind you're like you should be so thankful that i did not say what ini what i initially <laughs> wanted to say yeah but here's what i've been finding because that energy gets experienced as being shut down. So like when us as men like just don't say anything, like call it being shut down, it has your partner feel so isolated and shut out. So it almost gets worse. But in our minds, we're like, I ain't, this is the biggest gift for you right now. <laughs> so it's actually one of the things that kind of got triggered on our way here, right? It's that, and I'm still not doing one of the things that I'm promising, but when I get triggered, I want to take a moment, and it doesn't take me very long, like a minute. Let me collect my thoughts. Let me not react initially. But the thing I need to say is to say that out loud and not just be silent. So my promise I made on the way here was, and I know I promised this before, but I'm going to say, okay, I hear what you're saying, and just give me two minutes. Yeah, to process. And we'll come right back. Yeah, because women minutes, will feel like back. they're in the dark. And mm -hmm. hello, are you going to What respond? a gift. And, and, and this is another place where we're flipped. 
we're flipped on this one where I'm 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 always I'm so like needy naturally that I want I want to just get get the conversation out and Tasha sometimes you need to just like not talk to me for a little bit. So I've had to learn to go walk the dog or just do the dishes and then we'll come back to it. But I think frame of mind, like knowing that this is actually a positive thing, like it's a positive thing for me. I need that time to process my own thoughts, to organize my feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, It's almost like, uh, you know, I kind of think of it as yoga. It literally just went off, Dave. I kind of think of it as like yoga. Like, I don't know. It's therapeutic for me to like be in this space. So don't think of it as like a negative. We call it circulating energy. Like you have to sometimes pause and circulate the energy because especially, you know, you'll be feeling an emotion, right? Maybe you got frustrated, but then people think that they just need to take it out on their partner, right? Like release it when no, it's more so go somewhere. Maybe you need to even just vacuuming can move energy and that has you calm down and then you come back. And, and that can be super damaging on your partner too right. if they're, they're just constantly the, the dumpster right. where you throw all your emotional junk. <laughs> like, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. What would you say is another red flag? Well, I was going to say that sometimes this takes people being together for a few years. So it's not necessarily like whether they're married or not. Obviously, you're looking for red flags. But, well, number one, this is like A then B. Number one is the unwillingness to change, an unwillingness to look at yourself, an unwillingness to grow, especially if you have a partner that's like even wanting to better themselves. It's going to be very difficult when you get into challenges to see the challenges as things that are going to grow you and then you not be so rigid. I'm not changing. This is how I am. You accept it. That's typically not a great way to be in a relationship. But the other one I wanted to mention is so interesting and it's saying things this way. Oh, Jocelyn isn't going to like that. Oh, this is how Jocelyn is going to respond. And basically, you assume how they are is rigid. Yeah, and I've done that like five times. (laughs) Yeah, in just this conversation. Like putting words in someone's mouth, putting feelings in this person. It's like, you don't speak for me. Knowing your partner. We've literally been in conversations with a couple, and we'll ask like the the female, let's say, a question, and the guy will answer it. And he is like 100% certain. Oh, well, Jocelyn isn't going to. Um, It's like, well, number one, you are having your partner so rigid and so put in a box that there's no room for them to be anything at all. And you don't even have to even wake up and talk to them. What's the point of even talking? What's the point of getting to know them? So that, to me, is a huge red flag. When you get to the point of you already know who your partner is, Mm -hmm. what's the point of being present? Is there a... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. No. I was going to ask if there's a gender that uh, does that, (laughs) that speaks for the other gender more because you paused before you made it the guy. (laughs) And I was like, I think he's purposefully switching this around here. I would actually say not. I think it's more of a personality style. Okay. Yeah, I've seen it with both. I think it's more... You know, sometimes in partnerships, there's someone that's a little calmer, quieter. The other person's more a little more extroverted. So I think it's more of the personality style or the example they saw growing up. Right. So, again, our parents and what we saw, grandparents, our influences makes a big difference, especially that's where a lot of just our patterns get created. So if they saw their parents do it a lot, that's something they'd pick up. Are we a power couple? Do we? <laughs> well, you want to know That's how we define friend. that? <laughs> we'll define. Yeah. Okay, so what we would, and <laughs> we actually love to explain that because people hear power couple and they think it's truly about like status or money or success. But to us, it's about uh, two people who are committed to being the best versions of themselves and growing throughout their lifetime together and what we say co creating life. Because actually, one of the red flags is people think that they've arrived somewhere and that the goal is we got married, we got the house, we got the dog. The end. Right. Yeah. And that is doomsday. Yeah. Really, because that's when people start to sit back. Stagnant water. They gain a little, you know, weight and then they start to do less for their partner and start to be less intentional and shorter with their partner. So I think it's they have to keep creating what's next. So for us, a power couple is someone, a couple who's committed to growing, sticking through the tough seasons. And that's why in a lot of our social media, we talk about the tough moments. We talk about the tough seasons and we try to show that because that's what we really think is a power couple. I like that. Yeah, because I was I was really thinking about that, too, because I've, I've used the term power before to describe that. I'll say that people people are attracted to power. And, and then if anyone goes, oh, no, what are you talking about? I go, no, power is energy, right? Mm-hmm. So like the law of 
conservation of energy means you don't create energy or get rid of energy. So like you, I don't be, the power couple doesn't happen because I found Tasha or because you found me. It's because both of our energies together like move in the same direction. Mm -hmm. So it's like when you stop fighting each other's energies and use them and like kind of go parallel to each other, that's kind of where that's what that's that's the equal sign of power that's where it's all equaled out and i think there's so many times where people have the potential energy to be a power couple but it's kind of like one running in a different direction and then it, it equals out to zero i don't know that was my well, i love that you're bringing this up and man you're talking <laughs> my language of quantum physics i yeah. can go, oh, I go <laughs> deep with, nice. you with this yeah i felt like uh, jeff goldblum in jurassic park like what? What <laughs> <laughs> you felt like that yeah. <laughs> I mean, but you're right if, if you look at any you know not to go even more deep into energy but that's what everything is right i mean look at electricity to heat to uh, movement you have um, potential energy kinetic energy like it's all energy but the thing you should take away is that it's always moving you you can't stop it like life doesn't stop so if in your relationship you have barriers and resistance to the energy your conversations your dreams if that ever gets to a place that stop that's it's really unnatural right because the rest of life is always moving evolving and transforming and transferring into other forms of energy and not that's only is it bad for your relationship it can be bad for your health i mean people 100%, can totally yeah. lose a sense of who they are and purpose in physical illness you talk about the shame it's like if the energy is not flowing through you it's just getting stuck in this moment and then someone's like you know massaging you like what's that and that's your childhood that's what that is your childhood needs a massage yes. um, i don't i know i got to get you guys out of here yeah. so we're almost at your time to go so how can people find you that are listening in the podcast on my end where can people find yeah. all your stuff out? well definitely meet the freemans on instagram we love to socialize on there we have a podcast empowered couples podcast which you'll also be on our website is meet the and that yeah we have many resources downloads we do f one free coaching call with couples the first coaching call is free so oh, nice. anyone who wants to awesome. try it out yeah Thank you guys so much for coming over here. We're gonna be I'm gonna be in Scottsdale in next month. Good. I don't know if Tasha's gonna come with me, but I go Is with Is it my, a weekend? It's well, you could maybe you'll meet me there, but I go with my baseball team for nice. like a you know, old men tournament. <laughs> but uh, maybe we can come have a uh, drink with you guys or something we if, love if that. we're uh, yeah, if we can all connect. Do we convince you to come? Absolutely. You okay? I love Scottsdale. So, okay, come on, you don't but know. here's the deal. I might have to take the van there with the team because I'm going to be there for a few days before the weekend. And then you meet me there and then we can drive back together. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. It's a deal. We said it here first, folks. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being on the podcast. We appreciate you, uh, you guys stopping by. And yes. I know I got to get you out of here. But uh, that was the episode, everyone. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.